Hello Hazel and welcome to Wednesday afternoon's recording. So we left Mary, um, Ada and Rebecca getting to know each other and they are about to become the detectives, aren't they, and start investigating the case of this acorn that has gone missing. So here we go, chapter 11, Verde Green Manor. The words long and dark said over and over would give a pretty good description of the Verdigree dining room. At one end of the long dark table and beneath a long dark painting of a man with a long dark expression sat a number of actual non-painting people with matching long dark expressions. It is unfortunate that the criminal has been apprehended, said Lady Verdigree oh, sternly. Lady Verdigree was Rebecca's mother dressed all in black with buttons all the way up to her chin and Mary could not imagine her saying or doing anything in a way that could not be described as sternly. Mama, no, insisted Rebecca. I've known Rosie since we were girls. She's no criminal. Behind Rebecca stood a handsome young man in a lavender frock coat. He said nothing but placed his hands reassuringly on Rebecca's shoulders, and so Mary assumed this must need be Mr Datchery, Rebecca's fiancé. Lady Verdigree gave the young man a stern look, and he took his hands away and put them behind his back. Standing behind the stern Lady Verdigree was an oddly shaped man, thin but with a rounded belly, which made him somehow look thin and fat at the same time and a sort of pear-shaped head with a long, narrow nose. Ooh, what an odd image in my head. The oddly-shaped man had introduced himself as a Mr Abernathy, a wealthy friend of the family. I'm a wealthy friend of the family, he had said, very rich, friendly. Mary found it particularly rude of him to mention that he was rich, as in her experience, the people with the most money never seemed to bring it up at all. At all, I agree with Mary. Mary watched Ada watch the four people at the end of the table. The stern Lady Verdigree, the upset Rebecca, the oddly shaped Abernathy, and the comforting young man, the variables. And who is he? asked Ada, forgetting they had been introduced. It was the first time she had spoken in the Verdigree house. Ada had seemed overwhelmed by the outing, by being outside in general and had clutched Mary's hand tightly when they left the carriage and entered the house. I am Beau Dutchery, Lady Ada, Miss Verdigree's fiance. We were introduced not moments ago. Did you take it? I'm sorry, did I take what? said Beau, confused. The acorn pendant thingy, said Ada. And you say this is for a school project? questioned Lady Verdigree. Ada ignored her and continued to question Bo. Well, certainly Rebecca didn't take it because she already had it in her possession. Lady Verdigree didn't take it because she had it before, in the safe, waiting to give it to Rebecca. Mr Angry Bunny, Abernathy, said Mr Ab Abernathy. Him, you, you didn't take it because you don't need it, because you're rich, you said so, twice. And Rosie didn't take it, or at least Rebecca says so, and all your other servants have been cleared by the constables. Of course, Lady Verdigree hugged. So that leaves the fiancé. Ada turned to Beau. I'm afraid you're the only one left. Therefore, you took it, and not an elephant. She nodded smugly to Rebecca. Beau was quite surprised by this and didn't seem to know what to say. So he just said, hmm, instead. Lady Ada, said Rebecca reassuringly, Beau did not need to take the acorn. If he desired it, I simply would have given it to him. And when we are married, anything that belongs to me will belong to him. Will it? asked Ada. Yes, it shall. Well, that doesn't make any sense to me, said Ada. Nevertheless, added Lady Verdigree, which annoyed Ada greatly. While I'm sure this is very educational, she stressed the word. The matter is dealt with. The maid has confessed the pendant is unrecoverable. 
Might I ask if there's a drawing or something, asked Mary, so we know what it looks like for our uh, school project. There's an entire book on it, stated Lady Verdigree. Geoffrey, do you have Colonel Havisham's book? Geoffrey was apparently Mr Abernathy's first name, and he did have Colonel Havisham's book. He handed a small green cloth-bound volume to Mary, somewhat reluctantly. She thanked him, and when Ada reached for it out of habit, Mary had to give Ada a not-now look, twice, as Ada missed it the first time, and then she finally relented, handing it over for Ada's examination. The book was travel-worn and tatty, with the image of a gold acorn embossed on the cover. Beneath the acorn, in a ribbon, it read, oh now bear with me here, Hazel, Di parvi grandi afferhu erit, which Ada knew was Latin, although she didn't know what it meant. She noted that the book smelled very faintly of fish. This was written by my good friend Colonel Havisham, now deceased, explained Abernathy. It tells of his adventures in Turkey, where he acquired the jewel. Do you mind if we borrow this? asked Mary. Of course you may said Rebecca, anything to help your uh, school project. The expression on Rebecca's face was at once hopeful and sad. Mary made her thanks and polite excuses, and the Wollstonecraft girls followed the verdigrees is Butler, who was both short and talkative, to the front door. As they approached the waiting carriage, Ada seemed to forget her anxiety, her mind busy with the details of the case. Excellent. Now there are only two things left to do, she said with confidence. Mary was momentarily distracted by the sight of three unusual men standing across the street. Men wearing odd flat-top caps of red felt, like upturned flower pots. Men who seemed to be staring directly at her. She found the feeling quite unnerving. Two? asked Mary, her attention returning to Ada. One, read this book, said Ada, holding it up in one gloved hand, and two, go to prison. As Mary climbed into the black carriage, half expecting to see a boy pretending not to be there, her heart began to flutter at the thought of danger and adventure. Prison? Ada couldn't be serious, but of course Ada was as serious as Mr Abernathy was oddly shaped and as serious as Lady Verdigree was stern. They would have to interview Rosie and ask why she confessed to something Rebecca was sure she didn't do, and that meant getting into prison, somehow. Hello, said Peeves, still locked in the distillery cupboard back at the Marthabone house. I have to go to the bathroom. And that's the end of that chapter. Do you know, I'd forgotten about poor old Peeves, still locked up in in that cupboard. Poor man, he's been there. Well, now we've met a few more characters. Um, Rebecca's mum seems completely opposite to Rebecca, doesn't she? Because Rebecca's very sweet and I and I feel softly spoken um, and genteel. And her mother is sort of, well, on the lines of Ada, I would say, but even more so because she is a fully grown adult and I think she's used to probably being in charge and giving orders and having things done the way she likes it. Um, I do agree about that whole thing with Mr. Abernathy, Jeffrey Abernathy, that you know you don't say, "Oh, I'm so and so." It's like, "Oh, well, my name's Jude Adams, um, and I'm very rich and I'm very friendly." You just wouldn't say that, would you? That's a very odd thing to say. Uh, they've borrowed the book, haven't they, the journal? So let's see what comes up or comes out from looking into that. The other thing I found a little bit curious, because Ada, like I said, is a strong character, but we have to remember she's she's younger, isn't she? What is she, about 10, 12, something like that? I thought that was quite unusual how um, it's Mary said that she seemed very overwhelmed within her own four walls of her house she's very outspoken isn't she and no frills or fancies which you know we're all different and yet 
in the carriage, going out of the house, in the carriage, and then going to Rebecca's house, the Verdigris house, she seemed very overwhelmed by it, and actually held on tightly to Mary's hand. So that's an interesting... Yeah, I'm going to be looking out for a softer side to Ada, I think. So there we are. That brings us up to the end of that. So I, I am enjoying it. I, I think, you know, it's a very different read from last time. And I know it's not set in this day and age. But it has said from the outgo that this book is a mix of fact and also of history. So I think we're beginning to see more of that now, Hazel. So I hope you're enjoying it too. You're halfway through your week at school. Uh, Thursday tomorrow, before you know it, it'll be Friday and then the weekends come round again. So do have a lovely Wednesday evening and I will check in again with you for tomorrow's recording. Okay, take care. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.